Greetings Microscopists, this is Eric Miller from Instructinate and today I am at Materials Analytical Services in Suwannee, Georgia and I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered what was on the inside of a little piece of pollen? Yeah, me either, but hey, I've got this broad iron beam milling system here and I really want to cut something in half with it. So I found some pollen lying around from a peace lily plant and I thought, hey, let's see what happens. You can see if we stick these little guys under a light microscope that these pollens are very small. I mean, small enough that we're actually having a hard time getting a really close up view of them in this rather high powered light microscope. So if we wanna cut these little guys in half with the ion mill, we normally need the sample to be very flat so that we can make a good clean mill through these lumpy structures. Uh, I really need to embed them or encase them in something to get that nice clean mill. Well, that sounded a lot like effort to me. So instead, I just took the raw, unfiltered, untreated pollen and dumped it on some carbon tape, milled them for about 45 minutes at three kilovolts, and then stuck them straight into the SEM. I didn't even coat them with anything. I just hoped for the best. Once in the SEM, we can actually see the surface features on these little guys and measure them. And yeah, they are pretty small. They're about 35 microns long. And to put that into perspective, the hair on your head is usually around 50 microns thick. Now we can see that because the sample was not flat, most of the structures that were milled do look like a total disaster. And even some of the better ones have a lot of what we call curtaining effects. But through the law of averages or some other miracle, a few of the structures came out looking pretty good. And it's in these mostly flat areas that we can examine what mysterious structures lurk in the heart of the pollen. Starting from the outer shell, we can see some very delicate structures between it and the juicy insides. And the hard outer shell is also approximately one micron thick. In the bulk of the sample, we can see uh, several interesting looking structures. So what are these structures? I don't know, I'm not a botanist, get off my back. But if we look around a bit more, I saw these other structures, these lighter colored spheres. Well, that's different, I wonder what they could be. Well, how do we find out? It's easy, we insert the Bruker Flat Quad Energy Dispersive X-ray Spectroscopy Detector. Okay, so once that's been inserted, Once it's been inserted, One week. The flat quad will give us good EDS signal, even while running at very low voltage and low current. I'm running this at six kilovolts and in a very low current condition to minimize charging on this uncoated biological sample under high vacuum. Uh, so the EDS maps I'll get out of this will tell us qualitatively not only what elements are present, but where in the sample they're present. We can see that the hard outer coating is basically just carbon with a bit of oxygen. That surprises me in no wise. Uh, in the bulk inner part of the sample, there is a little bit of carbon as we would expect, but it also has a lot of oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Because this is a plant, I probably could have guessed all of those things without even looking. However, some of the things I would not have guessed are the phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, calcium, and a tiny bit of what I think is fluorine. So let's look at all these things individually. So these three spheres are what we're really interested in. They're about half a micron in diameter, and the one right here uh, at the bottom is just below the surface of the sample. So we can't see it very well in the secondary electron image, but at six kV, the beam is able to penetrate the sample far enough that we're getting plenty of EDS signal from it, and we'll, we'll, we will see it in the EDS maps. So going through all the elements in these spheres, we've got a distinct absence of carbon. What we do have is oxygen, phosphorus, magnesium, and potassium. So what does that mean? What do all of these elements make? I mean, I have no clue. I told you I'm not a botanist. 
But the Potash Development Association from the UK states on their website that phosphorus, magnesium, and potassium are the three main nutrients involved in plant growth and is something you should test for in your soil. So does that mean that these spheres are tiny bits of fertilizer that the new plant can use if it's germinated and it starts growing? No clue, but I'm sure some botanist can chime in here and let us know. Anyway, this is something that I just did on a lark. I didn't know if this would be anything interesting to literally anyone, anywhere, at any time. Uh, but I just thought it was kind of an interesting project to do with the broad ion beam milling system uh, to show you kind of some of the crazy things you can do with it. And I believe now that the broad ion beam milling system is an indispensable tool in modern SEM work. So tell me what you guys think. Do you have a broad ion beam milling system in your lab? Uh, what do you want to see me mill through next? Next, uh, let me know about it in the comments. Anyway, this is Eric Miller from Instructionate. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to Materials Analytical Services in Sewanee, Georgia. Thanks a lot, guys. And check out my website to see all the latest news in the world of electron microscopy. Thanks a lot. We'll see you around the lab.